Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, and like video. Yeah, so I want to talk about the books that I am most anticipating uh, of 2019. I figured 2019 I'll pick. Oh wait, that doesn't even make sense. Why did I think that? It was, they would be for 2020, so I should have 20, right? Why did I do 19? Oh boy, this this has already been thrown into a disarray. Um, okay, we'll do... <laughs> We'll do the top 20 most anticipated titles of 2020 while I'm filming this. I'll figure out what my last one, last spot is. But, um, yeah, I'm so excited. 2020 has a lot of really good books coming out. And, like, there are, there are uh, like, deals coming out, like, being, like, announced of, like, a publisher has purchased a book. And it's, like, 2021. And I'm like, why does that seem so far away? So right off the bat, and I'm, I'm, I know this is coming out, I think, in January, if not February. Blood Count is by Lana Popovic. I haven't read Lana Popovic's other stuff. I know people seem to, it seems to be like a, an acquired taste sort of author that people will either like devour everything you've ever written or they just don't seem to like your writing. So I have, I'm hoping that I love this. But like, first off, that cover. But secondly, it's about that Countess Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory, I think it is. The, the like, Miss, Mrs. Dracula lady who like bathed in the virgin's blood thing and then it's a historical fiction too so like this sounds like it has a lot of promise for my interest me and my friend Jennifer are so freaking excited about it um I also just freaking love that cover I already have my hold on my library copy um I want to see what it physically looks like I haven't really seen any arcs or any like previews for what the finished copy looks like so I want to get it through the library first and see if there's value in that and then if I like the story because it's an author I've never read before and the writing seems to be love or hate but I'm so excited this entire premise of like that we're kind of going back to like gothic -y horror notes in YA finally like I don't necessarily read like full-blown horrors but like having those darker themes and just darker history in that and messing with it and playing with it. I'm really excited for this book. I'm also insanely excited about Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. She just announced that they were pushing it from a March release to an August or a September release. So that makes me a little concerned. Um, I know she's written like on Twitter or whatever. She's like, I'm really proud of this. But I'm like, I've heard that before from authors and the book comes out and it's a hot mess. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if she's maybe doing just has to do more rewriting and rewording or something like that because it was originally I think just a three book contract that she had so she could have already basically had this done but then before like all of the hollow pox dates and the title and everything came out there was um an announcement that their contract had extended I think to six more books or something like that so I think she maybe had tied it up but now she can untie it and like let it go for a couple more books plot wise so I'm hoping that's what it is um Nevermore and Wondersmith were like amazing I absolutely adore that series so hopefully it's just as good as the other ones I love the covers again I want to get the US the UK and the German edition whenever the German edition comes out I am so excited for Queen of the Unwanted by Jenna Glass. Uh, this is the sequel to The Women's War. Uh, they did a cover change, which I normally hate, but I actually like the cover change. I wasn't totally sure what the heck they would do with a sequel cover of the first cover, honestly. I love the sequel cover of this with the purple and like the silhouettes on the bottom staring at each other. It like there's a lot of elements I feel like similar to Crier's War, which I love the cover of that one. Um, and The Women's War was absolutely amazing, fantastic. Um, it was everything that promised and hoped and I cannot wait for this things really go down in women's war so I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the sequel Surefall uh by Robert Jackson Bennett is the sequel to Foundry Side do I have Foundry Side yeah Foundry Side's right there um I'm freaking excited for this book um I read Foundry Side this year it totally blew me away and Surefall is the sequel to that I definitely want to reread Foundry Side before I pick up Surefall to read I have to watch because I want to have it in paperback as well so I don't know if I may have to wait a little bit longer than it's hardcover publication it is an adult book though so in Canada sometimes they release the hardcover and the paperback at the same time um I just I'll wait for the paperback but I'm really excited I actually shouldn't even say that I'll wait to buy the paperback I'll get the hardcover through the library because <laughs> I, I don't think I have the patience to wait more than like two weeks after the publication to read that one and I just love the covers of this series they're so cool with like the window and then like something there I love them I can't imagine I'm the only one excited for The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third and I think 
sadly, final book um, in the Kiss Quotent series is, what is that trilogy called? I've never even actually thought about that. Whatever that trilogy is with the Kiss Quotent, um, because the Kiss Quotent was amazing. I have fallen down this pit hole of diverse romances and gotten really into it um, since reading the Kiss Quotent because everyone just raved about it, rightfully so, because the Kiss Quotent is freaking amazing. The Bride Test is really good too. I like that it takes these certain topics um, that you can understand the morals of, but then gives these characters actual stories and it's some good sexy time romance. And I love the diversity rep in her book. Then Bright Raven Skies by Christina Perez. I'm so excited it's the third book in the Tristan Yee's old retelling series at Sweet Black Waves. Sweet Black Waves blew me out of the freaking water. I had an actual meltdown at work when I got an arc of Wild Savage Stars, which is the sequel to Sweet Black Waves. Um, I got that at, or maybe it just showed up at our office. I don't know. But either way, I lost it. I was so excited and I read it somehow in like two days while I was at a conference. I don't even know how the hell I did that, but it did. Um, the series is underrated, underappreciated, and it's fantastic. I'm trash for Kristen, Tristan and he's old. I, you know, James Franco's potentially problematic person now, but like Tristan and he's old, that movie was what originally got me. I was like, what the heck is this? Oh, it's like Romeo and Juliet. And I, looked at it and I was like, bitch, wait, this was before Romeo and Juliet. And like, I've just fallen down this pit hole. There are a few romances that I can take. It's got to be diverse or it's got to be like medieval Viking-esque apparently. I'm just so excited to see where that goes because it's got all these magic elements interwoven with all this history. And I'm just really excited to pick that one up. And I'm annoyed that they still don't have audiobooks for it because I would like to know how to properly pronounce all these Viking Scandinavian names. Um, but they don't which is kind of infuriating. Everyone needs to read this series, by the way. Like, I just, it's so under -pre Early in 2020, huzzah. So The Hand on the Wall by um, Maureen Johnson. Ooh, my brain went blank there. It is the third, and I, I hope, oh, I hope, final book of the Truly Devious series. In meaning, I hope, because I need things to get wrapped up. Every book in this series has not answered any questions. It just raises more of them. And then just like, meh, you thought this. No, it's actually not that. But I'm not going to tell you what it actually is. Um, the Vanishing Stare messed me up bad. So I need answers in my animal. <laughs> and like, I, even if not everything is wrapped up, because I just don't think she's going to wrap. I feel like there's going to be some stuff left unanswered. Um, just because of how, like with the multiple timelines, I feel like that would just work. Um, but... I need some essentials answered, like the bear, like, please, I need essentials answered. Um, I can't wait for this. I already have it pre-ordered. Um, I just want my, it's in my grubby little hands. No one's surprised. Um, I'm excited for A Murderous Relation, which is the fifth book in the Veronica Speedwell series. Um, Deanna Rayborn messes with me in this series. Um, I really wish we could get her to come TBR and Beyond group, but uh, it just, A Curious Beginning is my like one of my favorite-ish books. That series itself actually has dethroned Outlander as my most favorite series of all time. Um, Veronica and Stoker need to do the dirty horizontal refresh or I'm going to lose it. I'm concerned that they're not in this book because it got, her contract was originally for the five books. It got extended to seven, which is great because I have harassed enough people to buy it that it's, that it's working. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> At this point, I'm just like, she's going to get to the end of book seven and be like, no, I'm not actually going to give it to you, which I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to be okay if that's how it goes down. I have been waiting forever, it feels like, for another book from Anne Blankman, who wrote, uh, where it is, um, a Prisoner of Night and Fog series there, the duology. Um, and then I read Traitor's Angel, which I enjoyed, just not as much as A Prisoner of Night and Fog. And it's finally happening. I found out when she announced, like, that she had a, a, another book coming out, and it's a middle grade. And I was like, oh my god, this is, like, one of my dreams. And it's set in Chernobyl. <laughs> I, like, or I guess during Chernobyl. I'm, I'm so excited for this book. Like, just beyond excited. I love the freaking cover of it. I love that it's a middle grade. Um, I'm just... I love that we're going in middle grade and going to these darker historical time periods. If you don't know, Chernobyl was like a nuclear disaster in Russia um, where they had like built this like whole like metropolitan capital city and then like the nuclear meltdown happened and you can't live there. And then like people are now going there because of the HBO series, which I still haven't watched. I really need to get my crap together. Everyone says it's amazing. Um, and then people are going there now as like a tourist attraction, which is like one of the weirdest, like first of all, Russia is like a homophobic dictator like entity which just decided it wanted access to the Crimean Peninsula so it just 
took over part of the Ukraine, um, and during the Olympics, but like, I, uh, but then to go to a nuclear disaster site, that's just like a whole new level of fucked up, I feel like, that's a really messed up thing to do. Okay, so, um, Ulysseum girls, I think that's how you say it. Uh, I'm, I want to, like, read, like, the, um, the summary, because I read the summary before I saw the cover, like, before the cover is even revealed, and I was like, this is a thing? Like, this is something that's gonna be, like, in my hands? I'm, I'm excited. Um, and then the cover came out, and I was like, oh my god, they didn't put Charlie Bowwater with Akatar people on it. What? I'm so excited. In the sweeping Dust Bowl-inspired fantasy, a teen year, a ten year... <coughs> In a sweeping Dust Bowl-inspired fantasy, a ten-year game between life and death pits the walled Oklahoma city of Elysium, including a girl gang of witches and demons who long for humanity, against the supernatural in order to judge mankind. When Sal is named successor to Mother More... 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 Morevna, a powerful witch and leader of the Elysium, she jumps at the chance to prove herself to the town. Ever since she was a kid, Sal has been plagued by false visions of rain, and though people think she's a liar, she knows she's a leader. Even the arrival of the enigmatic outsider Asa, a human-obsessed demon in disguise, doesn't shake her confidence in her ability, until a terrible mistake results in both Sal and Asa's exile in the desert of dust and steel, face to face with the brutal, unforgiving landscape. Sal and Asa join a girl gang headed by another Elysium exile and a young witch herself, Olivia. In order to atone for their mistakes, their creative... They create a cavalry of magic-powered scrap metal horses to save Elysium from the coming apocalypse. But Sal and Asa and Olivia, <laughs> but Sal, uh, but Sal, Asa, and Olivia must do more than simply tip the scales of, in Elysium's favor. Only by reinventing the rules can they defeat, can they beat life and death at their own game. That sounds like a long-winded summary, but amazing. There's demons. There's witches. It's like apocalyptic. There's like weird, like dueling game thing and then there's this like outsider like the like the uh, just like the divergent kind of concept that the hunger games also use that it was stolen from many other series i'm excited for this love boat type hey i'm so excited for this i just I, and i don't know why no i do know why um uh, it kept being blurbed everywhere it was like for fans of crazy rich asians and i'm like i know this is a marketing ploy but it's working on me <laughs> hi i'm a fan of crazy rich asians um so I just, I know it's like a YA version. It's not going to have like adult sexy times in it, but I'm, I'm excited. I love this cover. It's, it looks so like whimsical, like cartoony and like, but not like manga with like, like, I feel like we do that a lot to like any sort of Asian representation that we put like the big manga eyes and the little, little itty bitty waist. Um, that the main character is like not doing well. She's Asian American. She's not doing well. So her parents sent her, I think it's to Thailand, um, to do like language classes or something during the summer. And then shows up and like the, it's like basically known as like the love shack school where like people don't actually do everything they're supposed to be doing and learning. Um, and like maybe get into like some nooky sexy time problems. So I'm excited for this. Uh, I already have the audiobook pre-ordered and I have the physical copy pre-ordered. So uh, or not, I guess the audiobook. I'm like first in line on my on my um, my library copy, so I'm excited. It has been the longest wait of my life, but we are finally getting book three of the Jane series. Um, so Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and um, Jody Meadows. Um, the third Jane that we're messing with is Calamity Jane. So the third book is called My Calamity Jane, and I'm so excited, and I love that they continued the covers of this series. I hate people on covers, except when they, like, did it with, like, this and, like, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, where they, like, add doodles and caricature drawings, and, like, I'm just, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. They also signed a contract to do a new series on, like, other people that they're gonna mess with. I will forever buy their books. My Lady Jane, like, is just, like, mind-bogglingly good. Like, I, it's incomprehensible, and I love that they're companions. Actually, I don't think I very commonly enjoy companion series. I'm just like, no, just continue with this. Just, like, just, st just do what you started with. Um, but, um, but this is just like, no, we're gonna mess with a bunch of ladies, and you can read book three and not book one and two, but you can read all of them. And I'm gonna read all of them. I'm very excited for My Calamity Jane so excited i need to read up more on calamity jane to like make sure i understand and appreciate it i think that's why i loved my lady jane more than my plain jane because i did study the tutors for like ever um so i could f pick up on all those like parallels between like the war of the religions and the during the tutors and then the 
animal morphing in the book. It was just really fantastic. Hi, um, for like three years I've been arguing with people about The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest and on several occasions I got called a racist because I was for this book which adamantly looks down upon racism and paints it as an evil. The YA book community is very weird. Um, the, <laughs> this is book three. Um, I think this series is now extended, it was supposed to be four books, but now it's supposed to be five books. And then we had the novella before and then the novella betweens book one and two, which are now one bound up novella. Um, the series is weird. I'm glad it sold well enough for them to like release physical copies of the novellas, which were originally just supposed to be ebooks. Um, so I loved, 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 loved The Black Witch. Um, looks like all of my fighting with people online finally actually was productive because a bunch of people finally read it and were like, wait, this isn't racist. It, it like, it like looks down upon racism. I'm like, yeah, I know. And I got called a racist for saying that. So, um, Shadowland, uh, after everything that happened in Ironflower, I have a lot of questions and with the prophecy and everything, I'm probably going to reread the, at least the main books, if not the main book and the novellas, um, before, shadow wand but man what i would do to get my grubby hands on an arc of that thing i'm hoping they'll have it at one of the conferences but i i don't know um but maybe i need to become better at social media and become friends with authors online and then like try and get them to the pity send me arcs like some bloggers do <laughs> the court of miracles i have been watching this book for freaking like a year and a half it had like three to four date changes. Um, it was originally like a couple dates in 2019, or maybe it was tw late 2018, then it went to 2019. And now it's pushed, <laughs> I, th I don't know if it's May or September now of 2020. Um, but like when they finally released the cover, I'm excited. Like, I'm excited. I was scared they were going to give it a Charlie Bowater cover and they didn't. I'm so happy. Um, I I think I, I've read the full bio summary thing of this book a few times, but I still came away with I'm like, so it's the Jungle Book meets Les Mis is literally the blurbing. And I'm like, I don't know how you mesh those two together. Um, I read the Jungle Book as a very young child. I don't remember a ton of it. Um, it's even been a long time since I watched the movies or any of the adaptations, really. But I'm like, I remember just the general essentials. I'm not sure how the hell you winter wait weave in woven those two but I'm excited. Um, I'm also curious because the author, like, I think this is her debut work, I'm pretty sure, but she has like, all of a sudden, like seven books on contract. So I don't know how the heck she's going to balance all that stuff. I've also seen the German cover for this book because it came out like months before the other cover. Um, and it's kind of really cool. It's definitely a different tone and very much darker looking. So I'm now confused of like, is it like a dark limit? Like, I don't know. I just know it promises diversity. The word use diversity actually kind of annoys me nowadays of like, give me some specifics. What do you mean by diversity? Is it a racially diverse cast? Is it like, is there queer representation? Are we getting immigrant representation? Are we getting some mental health represent? What is happening here? Now I'm getting a little bit concerned that the boy in the red dress, I don't even know what I'm going to put here. Maybe I'll just put like a stock photo of a boy in a red dress. I just need to read this in case you don't understand what book I'm talking about and you need to comprehend why this book is going to be potentially amazing. A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue meets Miss Fisher's Murder Mystery in the role in the role licking romp of Truth Lies and Troubled Past. New Year's Eve 1929. Millie is the MC of the Cloak and Daggers, an LGBT friendly speakeasy deep in the heart of the French Quarter, full of bootleg booze, cabaret acts, and where the New Orleans elite come out to play. Her best friend Marion is the star of the show. His diehard fans wouldn't miss a performance from the boy in the red dress. And together they rule the underground scene. Then a young socialite draped in furs starts asking questions, wielding a photograph of a boy who looks a lot like Marion. When the socialite's body is found in slumped when the socialite's body is found slumped in the back alley, all signs point to Marion as the murderer. Millie is determined to prove her best friend's innocence, even if that means risking her own life. As she chases clues that lead to cemeteries' dead ends, Millie's attention is divided between Rye and Beautiful Olive, a waitress at the Cloak and Dagger, Beanie and Beanie, the charming bootlegger who's offered to help her find the murderer. The clock is ticking for the fugitive Marion, but the truth of who the killer is might be closer than Millie thinks. So there's a bunch of queer rep in this. I'm so dang excited. Um, I, ha I was, however, slightly hesitant to put it on this list because in the TPR and Beyond group, I'm known as the little shit who keeps posting cover reveals because I open Twitter and Instagram and they're always there. So I share them. Um, and um, 
this book is scheduled to come out in May. There's still no cover. Um, and cover releases were in like August 2020, September 2020 cover reveals now. So the cover is really late almost now at this point. I mean, it's only five months and there's no cover. You can't really do pre-order swag. I haven't seen arcs of it anywhere. So I honestly have really high doubts that it's coming out in May. If it does, it comes out the day before my birthday, which is fantastic. Um, I do have a feeling this will get pushed to like a December 2020 release, if not 2021. Um, it's debut, there's no arcs, there's no marketing going around for it, nothing, and it comes out in five months. And May is a big release month again. So I'm honestly doubting at this point that it's going to be coming out with on time. Where Dreams Descend, I was unsure if I was interested in this book because the arc went around with just like these like no cover image. It was just like kind of Where Dreams Descend and like curly Q writing with like pink and I was like that looks kind of stupid. <laughs> and then they released the cover and I'm like I was wrong. I eat my words. It's not a Charlie Bowater cover and it's beautiful. It looks so much, it reminds me a lot of just Amanda Foodie in general. It looks like a potential, like a mashup of Ace of Shades and Daughter of the Burning City. I, the cover looks amazing and it's supposed to have Phantom of the Opera influences. Like the last time I was promised that I got kind of burned. Not burnt, like it wasn't a bad book. I just didn't enjoy the book. But like this sounds like it could be potentially really cool and I love the cover if they do anything to this any lifting any foiling any glitter it's going to look freaking fantastic so I'm wondering if that's why they did like a delayed cover reveal because they wanted to get all these nits and bits pieces together or they wanted to get the arcs out there early because I believe it's a debut author to get the buzz going about it or at least for people to see the book title and then to release the cover that they can mess with and do some really cool at least on the first run do some really cool things to the cover I will be incredibly disappointed if they give that cover and then do nothing else with it no lifting no texturing no under the dust jacket action I'd be really disappointed in the publisher if they did that so um I hope I love the book it sounds amazing it looks amazing and I'm gonna watch at my conferences to see if they can find arcs anywhere of it because I'm really interested in this book, the content alone. Ruthless Gods by Emily Duncan. Uh, Wicked Saints was one of my favorite books of the year. People seem to either have loved it, like me, or then I have a coworker who's like, it's a Grisha ripoff. I'm like, it's Russian influences. Of course, they're gonna have something similar, like, 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 anyways, I loved it. I know we're supposed to get more queer rep in Ruthless Gods. I love the cover. I would, man, the arcs for this one were so cool. I got an arc out of it at a conference, so I'm not, the likelihood of me getting one for Ruthless Gods is very low. Um, but they have like, like foil, like, or not foil, is it like aluminum, like metal something covers and then the book inside. That's really cool. I like that the publisher put that sort of money into the arc because it was New York Times bestselling when it came out. Also, the author is a librarian, so I love to support that. So I'm excited for Ruthless Gods. I know she's working on the third book and I just have really high hopes. I really, really, really enjoyed Wicked Sates, like an awful lot. Um, I think I did a solo review for that book too, so. Between Burning Worlds. I know like so few people who actually read Sky Without Stars, but I freaking loved it. It's Lunar Chronicles meets Les Mis. There's a lot of like lying and deceiving and everything. I'm definitely gonna read Sky, reread Sky Without Stars before picking up um, Between Burning Worlds, but I have Burning Worlds pre-ordered. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I know it doesn't come out till like May or something like that. But like I have it pre-ordered. I'm really excited to read this. Uh, I feel like it was a high key underappreciated book and I just loved, loved Sky Without Stars so much. And I loved the homages it paid to Les Mis and Lunar Chronicles across the board. It didn't feel cheap ripoff. Um, it definitely felt like influences and then making your, it your own. So I am so excited for this one. Trisha Levenseller is actually an auto buy author for me, so Shadows Between Us is kind of a, obviously I'm gonna buy it and read it. Um, Daughter of the Pirate King is like one of my all-time favorite reads. I, that book was just like blew me out of the water good. Um, and I'm so excited to see what else she, everyone, everyone I know that has read the arc has been like, it's better than Daughter of the Pirate King. Like I liked it more. And I think 
the one I'm just gonna throw in here, I think it's number 20, um, The Empire of the Vampires by Jay Kristoff. Um, even though Aurora Rising was definitely not for me, Illuminae is one of my all-time favorite trilogies. Um, the Dark Dawn, or I guess it's called Nevernight, but that tr that trilogy, I absolutely love that trilogy. Um, I have his Lotus Wars trilogy that I have to eventually get to, but Empire of the Vampire is his new adult since Dark Dawn has wrapped up. We're going to new it. He always seems to have one in like every genre somehow. I don't know how he writes that fast. But um, the Empire of the Vampire sounds like there's a lot of a lot of history elements pulled in, including like the what's that like the the Holy Grail, um, the cup. <laughs> All of a sudden, my brain just went always look on the bright side of life. So I'm so excited to see what the Empire of the Vampire has in store. I love that when I get told like it's new adult or adult, I'm not getting like twisted, manipulated. Like Jay Kristoff just writes like gruesome, violent, sexual books, right? So I, Mia is like an amazing character. So I'm excited to see what else he can do with vampires and like cult religion things and like the Holy Grail and like, it just sounds amazing. So I'm so excited for that. So I think that's 20 pretend it is if it isn't. Um, let me know in the comments what you were most excited for to read in 2020. I'm very into sequels um, and fantasies, uh, especially seem to be strong uh, this upcoming year, and diversity. I think it seems to be I'm sticking more in the YA realm this year, um, but that doesn't mean that there won't be some surprise middle grade releases. I was watching for Ashley Herring Blake, but her 2020 book got pushed to 2021. Um, she is the author of Ib Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World, and and um, Sunny St. James, um, I think the second, third book is right now, it's called like Clementine Rules the World or something like that. I'm really excited. She always gives amazing queer representation. Um, yeah, let me know what you're most excited for this year. And um, yeah, I will, oh God, it's gonna take forever. I will link all of these books in the description box down below. God, that's gonna take forever. Um, and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back and have a happy holiday and spend away in 2020.